Hi, I'm Mark Rosano, founder and CEO of C6 Capital Holdings, coming to you from Primary Vision Network. Today, we're just going to keep the show short, you know, let everyone get to their uh, their long Labor Day weekend. And we're just going to cover the primary vision for spread count. So just before we do that, we want to cover two uh, key topics. One is what came out this week. Uh, we had a busy week. We had our EIA show, which we broke up into three different parts. The economy show, which we broke up into three different parts. The OPEC show, which we broke up into supply and demand. And then our update on the India-China border clash. So take a look. Let us know what you think. All comments are always uh, welcome. And then the other thing that we want to touch on is the Liberty Schlumberger uh, merger slash buyout. So this, just to give you a backdrop of what that was, the Liberty Oilfield Services, they... Um, they bought the entire frac supply fleet from Schlumberger and gave up 37% of the equity. So now we're thinking that this puts, puts Liberty about number two right behind uh, uh, Halliburton just based on what's marketed and what we know to be out there. Now, you might think, like, why would Liberty do this at this time? And you have to consider that when you look at the logistics plan that they're plant that we that we see that we've been talking about it about the Permian, about the importance of technology, and really kind of improving some of these uh, these economies of scale, it makes a bit more sense. Now, we also have to remember Schlumberger has done stuff like this before, starting to get a little asset light, start to license out, but yet still keep a piece of the pie. So this is something where we would expect Schlumberger to revisit this, especially as COVID starts to subside demand starts to uh, to come back. Now, this could take a couple of years. This is not something that's going to happen tomorrow, but this is something that as the dust settles, things could get uh, pretty interesting. So now that we've covered uh, some of those topics, we can dive right in. And now, uh, the as we know from last week, the primary vision for X spread count was 85. And this week, we increased by two to come in at 87. So coming in at 87, you have to consider, you know, where what we've been talking about. When we've been talking about this, We've been saying that Appalachia, Permian was going to be relatively stable with the Permian starting to see some growth. We still see the Permian pretty much flat week over week, but we have started to see some of these additions in in areas of the Haynesville. You know, the, the, uh, the Bakken is back to a uh, double digit which is nice to see, but we also continue to see some increases in the fringe basins, but we also saw some fringe basins drop off, especially in, uh, in Ardmore, which we talked about, which again was going to come on and then start to kind of come back off. So again, we're starting to see a little bit of a creep higher. You know, the increase of two is nice to see, but again, it's going to be that slow grind. Like we're not going to see these major additions until some of these other basins, basins start to rally. So looking at it in terms of, you know, versus last year, you can see that we had 355. Yeah, it's no surprise that we've had a big drop off. But again, that stability is there. The Permian held steady. The Appalachia is heading, uh, holding steady. And we're starting to see some additions in some key areas. And again, it's something that we expect to see over the uh, coming months, especially when we look at where we've fallen from. So this is always a great chart. Looking at 2019, you, know, you can see that there was that slow kind of grind. We get a little bit of an increase. You know, we, we're still confident in saying that the four week average is going to be about, you know, let's, let's call it about 80 to 82, but you're going to start to see that creep higher until we really get the Permian coming on more aggressively. It's just going to be kind of this ebb and flow within a relatively tight range because we're going to have some of those fringe basins come on, then come back off. And, you know, Appalachia has some support based on where the curve is, where the expectations are going into the end of the year. So we expect to see a little bit more activity, especially in areas around the Haynesville and Appalachia. Again, not nothing get we're not getting crazy here. We're not saying that the app that that Haynesville is going to explode, but it makes sense to see a, a little bit more activity. And now when we just wrap up and look at what the last three months really looked like, you can see that, again, that slow grind. And it's, it's really going to come from, again, managing that decline curve. I, we can't stress enough the importance of managing the decline curve. So this isn't something where these, com these, these EMPs are coming back saying, look, we're going to grow, we're going to do this. It's no. How do we manage the decline curve so that when we get into 2021, things start to look a little bit better? We're going to be in a, in a better position where instead of having a 25% a decline curve, you have a 10% decline curve so you can start to grow. So they're really going to start managing their book, managing their basins, managing that capex, which is why we continue to see some of these, these additions. But again, nothing really crazy in terms of getting back over 100 in the near term. It's something where it's going to be that slow grind you know, with, uh, with some additional additions that we expect coming uh, even next week again. 
So thanks again for watching. You know, next week we're going to have another busy week. We're going to do our uh, express our special on inflation, the U.S. dollar. What does that mean? What does that mean for reserve currencies uh, or, and the reserve currency going forward? Because we had some some interesting China data that came out with them reducing uh, treasuries. What does that mean? How can that impact energy overall, especially as the petrodollar is so important? Then obviously our favorite, the EIA show, which is going to be a day later just because of the holiday. It'll come out on uh, Thursday. Day. And then we're going to have our economy show. And then obviously everyone's favorite, the primary vision frack spread count. So thanks again for watching. Uh, hope everyone has a great uh, Labor Day and uh, we'll talk to you soon.